Hello people, and welcome back to another City Skylines tier video. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. Today we're going to have a look at the five maps that came with the Campus DLC. Uh, some really nice maps in this one. So as always, we will compare them against each other and see what we think. So let's get started, shall we? First up on the Campus tier list video is Marin Bay, and this for me goes into a very healthy must play. So I might have a soft spot for a few of these campus maps, and Marion Bay was the home, of course, of Begusia, uh, which was the uh, City Skylines build guide series, uh, which I'll leave pinned in the top right here today as well, if you want to go and watch that series. So Marion Bay is a temperate themed map with a 61% buildable area. It has all natural resources available and all outside connections. Taking a look at those natural resources, it is pretty evenly spread. Uh, there's lots of ore mainly dotted around the water and some up in the mountains to the north. There is a really large oil patch down towards the southeast, but most of it's in the water. So you either have to use the oil rigs or terraform that out to reclaim the land. But otherwise, plenty of nice flat fertile land spots to be getting involved with. Taking a look at the terrain, all the land around the waterway is nice and flat, super easy to build on. You've even got a little inland lake here as well. And then in your 81 tower radius, you're going to be getting access to a lot of mountains, so not that friendly for building in the terrain. But you'll certainly get access to more coastline out here and some of the rolling hills at the bottom. But vast majority of it is pretty mountainous. If you're interested in getting involved with some wind turbines, then here is your wind map. And of course, if you do fancy a spot of fishing, the map mainly comes with anchovies with touches of shellfish out towards the ocean and little pockets of salmon uh, over in the east. But otherwise, I really enjoy building on this map. It's a really kind of cute temperate theme. Uh, the waterways are really interesting on Marin Bay. I think that's what makes it uh, fun to play. Uh, I actually use this river here as a dam, uh, which we had actually someone point out uh, during the last tier list when I criticised, I think it was, was it Diamond Coast or one of them, or Islands for having the weird Terraform River. Uh, but someone did point out that they do make good uh, spots for dams, so absolutely, this is a good spot for one right here. But some of the nice little bits of detailing, little castles and graveyards knocking about on these islands. Just a really nice decorated map. I think this for me was the first map released where I really noticed that the developers were getting better at making maps. I think it was Marin Bay. I was like, yeah, this is nice. <laughs> this is good. And there it is. And we started getting these little custom interchanges here as well. Uh, which is hugely appreciated, right? And that they've gone to the effort to build this little trumpet here. It's, uh, it's nice. It's a really nice map. And like I said at the start of the video, if you'd like to see a uh, city being built on this map, I will link to my uh, old series, the City of Skylines Build Guide, where we build the city of Begusia here. But... Really nice terrain, lovely waterways to work with, all your resources and connections. Marion Bay is an absolute must play for me. Next up on the campus tier video is Murky Coast. Wonder where this one's going to go. And for me, it is 100% going into a must play. So Murky Coast, of course, home to our beloved Palavan. I am absolutely in love with this map, so maybe again a little bit of bias, but I'll try and explain why I love it so much in terms of gameplay is a boreal themed map with all available outside connections and all natural resources. Taking a look at those natural resources, the only real drawback is there's only really small amounts of oil, uh, one right here next to the starting tile, and then one down on the southern coastline. But otherwise, tons of fertile land, lots of forestry, which of course can be placed manually, and plenty of ore in the west and the east, all up in the mountains. If you do suffer from wind, then here is your wind map for Murky Coast. The terrain all around the waterway is super flat and easy to build on, and all of the peaks in Murky Coast are really interesting looking. You have this lone peak on an island uh, down in the south here, and then all these like really impressive mountain ridges, just really nicely terraformed. Lots of nice flowing waterways, nice terrain on Murky Coast. If you're interested in doing a spot of fishing, then you have access to pretty much everything in vast amounts, uh, with the rivers mainly being tuna, and then as they widen out into uh, salmon, and then tons of anchovy and shellfish knocking about in the ocean. But how weird does this map look without Palavan on it? <laughs> it's, um, yeah, if you haven't seen that series, it's one of my uh, one of my favourite ever series that we recorded on this channel. Uh, do go and check out Palavan, it will be linked in the, the video as well. One of my favourite things about this map is the way the rivers converge. Uh, you get some uh, real kind of heavy natural Pittsburgh vibes here, uh, which is what we went for. Again, in Palavan. <laughs> Sorry to keep talking about it, but just look at it. It just speaks for itself, doesn't it? It's just wonderful. Like, really nicely dramatic terraform mountain ridges. Like, this is nice mountain terraforming here. All spills down like this. And then, of course, the 
kind of low mountain on the island. Just really nice. <laughs> I just love this map. Just so nice. Uh, Snite and Tile is really friendly. Get lots of forestry and fertile land. Uh, immediately available. Uh, and an outside rail connection too, which is really handy. Uh, to have that so close to your Snite and Tile. Uh, we did also have someone mention on the last tier list as well that uh, Boreal maps should be mentioned. That they are somewhat unplayable without mods. I do kind of agree with this. Um, they are very dark and quite foggy uh, without ultimate eye candy at least just to boost the uh, ambient brightness. So that could be a drawback for boreal themed maps so it's up to you whether or not that's kind of a game changer. But otherwise Murky Coast, home to my favourite ever city. Really nice terrain, lots of resources, all your connections. Just beautiful. <laughs> Murky Coast is a must play. Next up on the campus tier video is Northwood Hills, and this for me goes into a healthy B tier. So Northwood Hills is a European themed map with a 72% buildable area, all available natural resources. It does not have any sea connections, it is a landlocked map, so no ports or cruise liners. Taking a look at those natural resources, again, uh, lots and lots of fertile land on Northwood Hills, so if you're interested in getting involved in some farms, uh, sat at the bottom of lots of very impressive looking mountains. Northwood Hills is a good shout for that. And similar to Murky Coast, very little oil in Northwood Hills as well. If you're a fan of the wind turbines, here's your wind map. And as you would imagine, for a landlocked map, fishing is pretty sparse. You have only salmon through the two main waterways, however, there is a larger body of water holding a ton of anchovies and little splashings of tuna over to the little uh, eastern river down here as well. Start and Tile does have a waterway flowing through it, which is a really nice start, also sat at the bottom of the mountains, so nice and friendly. And the map is generally nice, um, if the terrain is not a little bit deceiving, um, everything is almost always on a slope, uh, which if you're playing through the milestones, you don't immediately get access to those level terrain tools, so might affect the start of your build quite a lot if you're not a fan of building down slopes or you're maybe not particularly confident with it. So probably not the most beginner friendly start in tile in the, in the game, I reckon. But it's a nice looking map. The hills are very nicely terraformed. But you do kind of get some almost Italian Dolomite vibes uh, out of these hills. Not quite as dramatic as that, but definitely some nice kind of European looking mountains. Again, as with all the other campus DLC maps, we began to get these custom interchanges, which, whilst the layer mathematics is a little bit off, is still appreciated, and some really nice curves here. These are, these are nice builds. Likewise over here as well, getting some kind of new custom designs. Always nice, right? And just a commentary in today's video as well, compared to the, uh, <laughs> the base game highways, right? Much smoother now, much nicer. Definitely see the improvement in quality. You do have some really interesting terrain here, almost like cracks in the earth where an earthquake has happened. And then there's kind of little pockets of water uh, in and around them. So I guess you could kind of terraform this to make it one uh, consistent waterway, which probably would look quite nice. And I would probably say improve it as well. But some other nice looking terrain around this lake here as well, all nicely decorated with your castles and, and walls and whatnot. So I'd say it's one of the better European maps in the game. Um, it's somewhat unfriendly terrain and lack of a sea connection. Probably brings its score down a little bit, but there's certainly nothing dramatically wrong, which is exactly what B tier is for. Just a nice, happy European map. If you're not a fan of those janky terrains, you probably won't have that much of a nice time with Northwood Hills. But middle of the road, decent map, no sea connection, but symptom of a landlocked map. B tier for Northwood Hills. Next up on the campus map tier list is Rosalind Peninsula, and this for me is actually quite a surprise A tier. So Rosalind Peninsula is a tropical themed map with a 54% buildable area, has all available natural resources and all available outside connections. Taking a look at those natural resources, you have an absolute ton of oil, kind of the polar opposite from all the other campus maps, and very little fertile land this time round. However, lots of oil on the tropical theme lends itself very well to generating some kind of coastal oil refineries. Very interesting kind of themed builds. Taking a look at your terrain, your starting tile on all the land alongside the east coast is super flat and very friendly for beginners. Nice and easy to build on. You have a huge spine of mountains running directly through the map. 
and the map is not really at all friendly to 81 tiles. The only thing you're really unlocking is more mountainous terrain to the north, if not a little bit of flatland, but mainly just water is 81 tiles, so not the best map for that. If you are a Windy Mindy, then here is your wind map. And indeed, if we are going fishing, then you will have access to all the shellfish and anchovies you could ever want, with smaller pockets of salmon knocking about in the rivers. No tuna, so if you do want tuna harbours, then you will have to terraform to get them to spawn. So why is it so high? And it's because of its just the way it looks. <laughs> it's a really, really interesting looking map. Definitely lives up to its name. It is a, certainly a peninsula. Uh, but you're going to get all these white sandy beach opportunities. And whilst the majority of the land around here is fairly flat, this is where you would imagine building most of your kind of main infrastructure and high density stuff in these kind of flatter plains along the water. But then even around the back, you've got all these little kind of bays and some islands off the coast, if not a little bit jankily terraformed, but at least they're there, right? You can you can always sort that out yourself. And just the landscape in general, like little white sandy beaches and streams coming out of the mountains. Some really nice kind of coastal town opportunities around here. Really interesting landscape, and we do have a couple of mountain streams as well. Uh, there's one that feeds out of here, and then there's another one uh, over here as well. Uh, so that's really nice, always... A nice appreciated aesthetic when the kind of mountains are alive, if you will. You know, they do have kind of water coming down them. So that's really nice. Again, we have some more of this terraform similar that we found in Northwood Hills. So you could probably open this channel out if you want and allow the water to come straight through. Kind of make this an island if you'd like. So nice terraforming opportunities. Map detailing is our usual favourite vanilla bits and pieces. This is really nice. This is quite a cute way to use these assets here. I like that. And I absolutely love the train intersections <laughs> on this map when we compare them to the base game vanilla ones that we looked at in the last tier list. They were so small and this one is enormous. <laughs> like total, total polar opposites, right? You can definitely tell they figured out how the trains interact with these intersections. So, you know, all that's been sorted out from the horrible base game maps. As with the rest of the maps we looked at today. But yeah, um, I would probably say again, like Northwood Hills for the European maps, uh, Rosalind Peninsula is probably one of the better tropical maps in the game. Really interesting landscape to look at and work with. Definitely won't be for everyone um, because of the type of map it is. There is a lot of water. It's very coastal, has a very particular vibe. But really strong A-tier tropical map. I have time for Rosalind Peninsula. And last but certainly not least is Wolf Creek. And this is going to go again middle of the road B tier. So Wolf Creek is a boreal themed map again with a 60% buildable area or natural resources but has no sea connection so we're in another landlocked map. No ports or cruise liners. Taking a look at those natural resources this map does bend back to the fashion of very little oil for the campus maps. You are getting some over in the north here and some in the south in the mountains but lots of ore and some nice central fertile land spots as well. Not the best map in the world for wind turbines outside of the starting tile. It's mainly all up on the mountain ridges. Taking a look at your terrain. Again, your starting areas and most of the land around the waterway is relatively flat and friendly for beginners. Nice and easy for building. And then everything within your 8 to 1 tile radius is pretty mountainous. If not for some relatively friendly land in the valleys up against the water. But lots of mountains here. And the salmon have totally dominated the rivers if you're interested in doing some fishing. Uh, with pockets of anchovies and shellfish in the east and west respectively. So we'll throw in a little bit of overcharged egg lore and say that Palavin was very very nearly on Wolf Creek and you can kind of see why it does have some kind of spatterings of murky coast doesn't it? It's got that kind of boreal mountain vibe. Uh, murky coast pulls off a lot better and we'll have a little look at why. You know, it's really nice terraformed mountains. They did a great job of terraforming here. I'm always a fan to see these kind of big ridges coming down uh, off of the top. And this map has a lot of them. You can kind of see them all over the place here. Which does have its drawback because you're going to not really get much use out of these lands if you're playing with 8 one tiles. It's very kind of wild and mountainous. Which can be nice but not the best for building. Do also have some kind of old dormant volcano vibes here as well. Definitely some kind of crater action happening here. So you could possibly build a little village up in the Crater Valley if you like. But with those scarce natural resources, especially with the oil, very mountainous terrain and 
not really that buildable outside of kind of your 25 tower radius. Uh, the land becomes significantly unfriendlier uh, once you move away from these initial starting tiles. And it does kind of justify its B tier slot alongside uh, Northwood Hills. And it is essentially kind of the boreal version of Northwood Hills. Uh, just kind of a very safe middle of the road uh, boreal theme map. Uh, some nice mountains, not massively friendly for 81 tiles. Very little oil and no sea connection. Keep it middle of the road. Certainly not the worst map in the game. But there are definitely better boreal maps that you can be playing. Okay guys, that is going to do it for today. I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, likes, comments and shares below really help me out. Equally as much if you haven't enjoyed it, please feel free to leave a dislike as well. Thank you so much again for all the support on these tier videos. You guys are really enjoying this content and I'm more than happy to keep putting them together. And we'll keep just moving through the DLCs now. Probably have a look at Part Life next, I think. Some really interesting maps in Part Life. <laughs> Which we will. We will get to them. Um, but if you're, again, using this as something of a buyer's guide to explore new maps... Campus is definitely one of the better DLCs for maps. I um, mean, you know, nothing below B tier here and two must plays and an A tier. You can't really complain at that. So if you want new maps, Campus and Sunset Harbour will definitely be up there. Otherwise, so we'll shut up and we'll leave it there. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, enjoy the rest of your day.